Hello, James Bailey here. Pleased to be giving this talk for SISAP 2021 on relationships between local intrinsic dimensionality and uh, tail entropy. So um, this is a, a paper together with colleagues, Michael Hall from NII Japan and Daniel Ma from Deakin, Deakin University. Just to give you um, an outline of, of where we're gonna go in this talk, I'll, I'll, I'll begin by uh, providing a bit of a refresher on the concept of local intrinsic dimensionality, the, the intuition behind it. And then we'll, we'll get into the, our study of the relationships between local intrinsic dimensionality and entropy. Um, and I'll spend a little bit less time on, on some of the variations of entropy after covering the, the principal one in the middle part of the talk. Generally speaking, um, we'll focus more on the intuitions and the formalism in this talk. You can, of course, look at the paper and the, the detail on the paper for, for the formalism. So what is, what is local intrinsic dimensionality? The idea is that we've got a, we've got a, a central, central query point and there's, there's other points surrounding that, that central query point, as, as one can see in this diagram over here. And then we look at the, the, the distances from this central query point to each other query point and we, um, we record those distances. And here we've got a distance R from this uh, query point to, to a particular location. And so this, this, um, this set of distances, we can um, treat it as a random variable R. And then the formal definition of local intrinsic dimensionality or LID as it's called, is just the, the ratio of R times the derivative of the, the CDF um, divided by the, the, the CDF itself. So here, the, the capital F is the cumulative distribution function and an F of R is the probability that you'll find a, a neighbor um, of the query at distance less than or equal to R. And the derivative F dashed um, is the derivative of the, of the CDF. So one can assess the, the LID at any, at any radius R, but um, we're really more interested in what happens asymptotically as, as R goes to zero, as um, one um, one examines an um, infinitesimally small uh, radius around the, around the query. So what does, what does LID or local intrinsic dimensionality, what, what does it mean? How do you interpret it? Um, down the bottom, we've, we've, we've got a few possible, possible ways to, um, to, to think about LID. One is it's just the, the number of latent features to describe the, uh, the query point um, or the, the intrinsic dimension, if you like, of, of the space immediately surrounding the query point. You can also think of it as a, as a growth rate. So it's the, it's the relative growth rate of the, of the CDF as you make relative changes in the, um, in the radius R around the query point. And you can also think of it as a, a space filling capacity of the local neighborhood around the query point. This is just a, a, a figure that, that, that visualizes what's, what, what's happening. Uh, we've, got a, we've, we've got a data set. There's, there's a number of points, the black dots, and one can see over here, there's a query point and its LID is, is roughly two. And this means that what one can think of the space immediately surrounding this query point as, as, as having the characteristics of, of what you'd see in, 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 in two, two dimensions. Um, on, on the other hand, this query point over here, you can um, think of it as, as having an LID of, of, of roughly one, which, which means that the characteristics of the, the distances of its neighbors are behaving like um, one would expect for, for, for one dimension. Um, LID, the, 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 the formalism behind LID and the theory behind LID assumes continuous distributions, but of course one only ever sees a sample. The good news is that there's estimators one can use to um, estimate the, the, the value of, of the local intrinsic dimensionality given a, given a particular sample. It requires the choice of a, a, of a parameter K, which is the number of nearest neighbors that you use for the, for, for the estimate. And um, Hull has developed um, and explored connections um, of, of LID to extreme value theory. And one can actually show that the, that the nearest neighbor distances are um, extreme events and you can, um, you can model that in a, in a, in a para parametric way, um, the, the lower tail distribution of the distances from the, from the query. It's in fact a generalized Pareto uh, distribution. 
a uh, little bit more intuition. Um, here we've got a couple of uh, a couple of figures. In the in the in the middle is the the query, the the, the red point, um, and in this in this figure over here we've got a um, LID of, of 1.5. As we start moving the query to the right, um, the LID increases first to 1.77 and then to 2.91. So as the query is becoming more outlying with respect to its neighbours, the LID is is increasing. Um, moving away from its local submanifold. Another example on the bottom here, we again, we start off with a, a query with the same, um, same LID. And as we move the neighbors this time away from the query, um, uh, the LID is, is, is increasing first to 2.54 and then to 5.36. So the, 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 the query as its neighbors move away, it's it, it, intuitively, it's, it's looking more like it's inside a high dimensional pocket in, in multi-dimensional space. Um, LIDs um, increasingly being explored and used in lots of interesting ways. Um, the SISAP community are, are looking at LID in areas, classic areas like clustering, outlier detection, similarity search. Um, LID has also been used for understanding deep learning, neural network models, what's happening in the, in the representations that they learn. Um, it's being used to um, explain and characterize perturbations, in particular adversarial perturbations um, in, in data sets. And it's also being applied in, in, in other areas such as complex materials and characterizing the, the failure in, in, in granular systems. So um, as, we, as we now get move into the, the, the main part of the talk, which is about LID and entropy, we're going to make use of this, this key result from, uh, from Hull 2017. Um, and this is this is saying that um, as the uh, as the radius around the query approaches zero, then we have this this very nice property of the of the neighbor distance distribution that um, that um, it can be it can be described in a in a in a parametric way. So as this this radius moves to uh, moves to zero, it actually takes the form of a, of a power law where the power is is the is, is the is the LID. So LID is one way to characterize complexity of, of a neighborhood and, and, and distances to neighbors around a query. Um, a natural question to ask is what are, what are some other ways of, of, of characterizing complexity? And a very natural thing to think about here is an entropy, entropy-based characterization, given the, the classic role of, of, of entropy in, in, in computing and, and signal processing as a, as a measure of, of data complexity. And so what we um, do in this paper is explore um, connections between, between entropy of nearest neighbor distributions and, and LID in this setting where, where one has a query and we're looking at infinitesimally um, small distance, distances from the query to its, its neighbors. We look at a number of variations of entropy, entropy, entropy power, something called cumulative entropy, and also variations based on a, on a Q parameter. So the, the, first, the, the first type of entropy that, that we look at, um, we call it tail entropy because we're looking at the tail of, of distances um, from, the, from the query to its, to, to its neighbours. Um, and entropy intuitively is trying to assess the, the uncertainty of those, of, of those distances. Um, just, just noting that we're, they're in, we're interested in a conditional distribution. So we're interested in distances that, that are less than some, some, some W. In the middle, we've got this, just the classic definition of, 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 of entropy and um, combining these two things together, we, we, can, we can immediately define tail entropy in the, in the following way, this, this particular integral based on the CDF um, um, describing the distances to neighbors. What's, what's tail entropy assessing? Well, um, one can think of it as, as, as assessing uncertainty in the distance distribution around the query. So here we have a query in the middle um, for a particular sample, and we've got a distance R1, another R2, another R3, R4, R5. If we collect all of these distances, it's a set of distances. I've just stacked them up here. Um, it's, it's a sample from a, distri uh, a distribution of, of distances, and the, the, the tail entropy is characterizing the uncertainty, um, the uncertainty in, this, in this distribution. Um, our result, um, how do we uh, relate uh, LID and, and, and entropy? Well, for technical reasons, we actually look at the exponential of the entropy rather than the entropy itself. 
and this is actually called something called called entropy power. It's not something we made up, but it, it actually plays a, a, a quite a key role in information theory. Entropy power um, it goes under other names such as perplexity in information retrieval, and, it, and ecologists use it and, and call it true true diversity. So we look at this um, measure called called the entropy power, which is just the exponential of the entropy. And in our paper, we, we, we provide the result that um, as, as W, as the, uh, as the radius around the query goes to, goes to zero, if you, if you normalize the, the entropy power by, by W, um, then you can actually show this is equal to something that only involves the intrinsic dimensionality um, of, the, uh, of, the, of the query, of the neighborhood of the query, one over ID times the exponential of this expression. So we've got this, this quite interesting and, and rather nice relationship between entropy or rather entropy power and ID as, as w, w goes to zero. Um, one, can, one can also think about this in terms of like something like a concentration effect. We've got the entropy power over, over W, this, this normalized entropy power, um, looking at as W goes to zero. And then if we graph that, if we increase the ID and see how this, this actually changes, we can see that as the ID increases, the normalized entropy power decreases. You can think of this as a, a bit like a, a concentration effect. As the, as, as the ID um, increases, the, um, there's less um, and less uncertainty about the, the, the distance distribution. In, in other words, your, um, your, your entropy decreases. Um, you can also think about tail entropy power in terms of diversity. So um, it actually corresponds to the d diversity of the distances of neighbors around the query. This follows from the fact that the entropy power of a, of a uniform distribution um, on the interval zero to W is just W. You can, you can show this fairly easily. So a uniform distribution on an on, on interval zero to two W is going to be twice as diverse as a uniform distribution on, on, on zero to W. In other words, if I randomly select something in interval zero to two W, um, I'm, I'm twice as uncertain about what I'll get as, as, as something on interval zero to W. So if the entropy power equals S, then this is immediately equal to the diversity of a uniform distribution on, on, on zero to S. Saying this in, in another way, um, we've got a query. And in this example here, the query has low ID this corresponds to a high diversity of distances to, to its neighbors. On the right-hand side, we've got a query and it's got high ID. And you can see that this corresponds to low diversity of distances to its neighbors. They all look fairly similar, these neighbor distances. Um, another way, again, thinking about this in terms of diversity, if we've got two queries, um, both looking at distance distributions in interval zero to W, if one has the entropy power 0.7, the other 0.35, we can say that the distribution for the query, the first one is twice as diverse as the one for the second one. And one could calculate this, these 0.7s and 0.35s just using that ID formula if we wanted to. Um, yet another way of thinking about this is, um, suppose the ID or the, rather the LID is equal to one, the entropy power is equal to one. If the ID is two, you can calculate the entropy power as 0.824. So this means as we move from 1D to 2D, there's a um, minus a decrease 17.6% in terms of diversity. Um, as you move from 1D to 5D, um, the, the, there's a decrease minus 55.5% in, in diversity. So you can actually measure the relative change in, in diversity between, um, between different, um, different IDs, different local distributions. Um, of distances from a query to its neighbors. In the paper, we also look at a, a variation of entropy. We, we don't just look at differential entropy, but we also look at something called cumulative entropy. It's been um, proposed by um, Rao et al, Crescenzo et al, basically because differential entropy has some strange behavior. It can be negative. It's also hard to estimate and assumes you have a PDF. Um, so cumulative entropy is quite simple. It's really just replacing the, the, the PDF, um, F dashed, by the, by the CDF in the, in the entropy formula. And it's been shown that this has some nice applications in, in reliability theory. 
So cumulant of entropy, this is this is the way it's um, this is the way it's defined. See that we're using the, the CDF here rather than derivative of, of, of the CDF um, in this in this cumulative entropy formula. Um, again, we are able to um, derive a, a, a quite a nice result that relates cumulative entropy to, to, to ID, assuming that the, the, the size of the neighborhood goes to goes to zero using this ID representation theorem showing that the distribution must have a particular form, that of a power law. So you do the integration, do the manipulations, and we can show that the cumulative entropy normalized by W is ID or over ID plus one squared of the, of the query. So nice, a nice relationship, nice simple relationship. We also look at in the paper, and I, I won't have time in this talk, um, other variations of, of entropy based on a, a fitting parameter Q. So, these are so-called generalized entropies or, or Salus entropies, and, and they've been used particularly heavily in um, physics to provide extra robustness, extra fitting capability um, for, for, for when you use entropy. And they have a nice property that, that as you make the parameter Q go to one, you recover standard differential entropy, standard cumulative entropy. So one can define these Q entropies, um, um, as, I've, as I've just said, and in our paper, we provide a series of results about both the, the standard, the standard entropy, cumulative entropy, entropy power, and the Q variations, cumulative Q entropy, Q entropy power. And over on the right hand side, we can see we can see that the formulas that we um, we derive for each of these entropies as the size of the neighborhood distances to the nearest neighbors go to go to zero. So in, in other words, there's, a, there's an interchangeable relationship between ID and entropy. We can either talk about it in terms of ID or we can talk about it in terms of, of entropy. The technical, the technical challenge um, that, we, that we tackle in the paper is, is deriving all of these results in a rigorous way, and in particular deriving it as the, in the limit as W goes to zero. And you can read the paper for more details about the lemmas we, we use there. Um, applications of, of, of our work, um, there's, there's some applications in terms of estimation of ID. Um, it turns out that there's actually estimators for cumulative entropy, given that we've shown the relationship between cumulative entropy and ID, um, LID, um, you can use the estimator for, for the first to um, uh, estimate the second, or vice versa. We could derive new estimators for cumulative entropy using existing estimators for LID. Another way to think about this is um, where we've actually developed new measures of, of complexity. So um, instead of comparing, instead of comparing LID values, should one actually be comparing tail entropies instead of LID values? And probably the, it's going to be context dependent as to which is more, more appropriate. But our, our, our work actually shows that you can move interchangeably between the two and use whichever is more appropriate or convenient for your, for your setting. Um, in summary, uh, we've what have we done? We've, we've developed some some asymptotic relationships between between tail entropy, um, the, the distribution of the nearest neighbors of a query, and we've connected it to the theory of, of local intrinsic dimensionality. Um, as a result, we've got some new tools for for characterizing the complexity of, of local neighborhoods around a query, the, the the distances from the query to its its nearest neighbors. We've got new ways of characterizing what's what's happening there. And this opens the door to, to, to further and more cross fertilization between entropy, entropy research, of which there's a, there's a very large body, and also intrinsic dimensionality research. I will finish there, and um, I'm happy to answer questions when, if I perhaps see you at the conference. <laughs>